Hello and welcome back to another edition of Open Air Atheist. I'm James Theodore Stillwell III, and um, today's episode is entitled God Didn't Exist in Auschwitz. And I'm sure that this episode is going to tick a lot of religious folks off, but that is not the point in this video. The point in this video is to be honest and um, to touch on what I feel uh, needs to be touched on. Uh, when it comes to religi religiosity. Um, so let's begin. If you, were, if you or I stood by and watched the horrific murders of men, women, and children, had the power to act and intervene, and yet did nothing, shouldn't we be held accountable for the crime of depraved indifference? How much more guilty would the God of the Bible be if he actually existed? Christians assert that God is all-knowing, everywhere beholding the evil and the good, and that he is all-powerful and the epitome of perfect love. But how do those attributes comport with the atrocities of Nazi Germany? That is what this episode is all about. It is quite easy for a uh, sheltered democratic nation to believe in such fantasies such as the Christian one and of course to embrace moral absolutes but an altogether different point of view to those who live in the real world now let us go back in time to Nazi Germany shall we the vast um, Auschwitz death camp was a self-contained universe a place to live a place to work and when you could not work, a place to die. This was also a place where those with disabilities came uh, to die because they were considered useless to the Nazis and the German society. <clears throat> Some camp residents died from disease, most from toxic gas, but still many from starvation. But the guards were feasting like kings. Where was God's love and all-powerfulness when the Auschwitz doctors used children as guinea pigs? And untold numbers were killed in these mad medical experimentations. Where was your God, Christianity? To quote an Auschwitz, uh, from an Auschwitz survivor, God didn't exist in Auschwitz. So many people were being killed at the death camps. There was a continuous stream of bodies constantly being thrown into the fire pits. And might I add, um, this graphic sense or scene, excuse me, this graphic scene was a bit like the hellish scene depicted at the end of the Christian Bible and its lake of fire. In 1942, over 4,000 children were ripped from their families and transferred to Auschwitz, where they were led into gas chambers disguised as shower rooms. As they entered, many of them were seen laughing and playing with their toys, like all children do. Only the Nazis and God if he actually existed, um, knew what would happen next. And yet he did nothing, which makes me wonder if he was a member of the Nazi party. When the children entered, the doors were shut, and, this, and the seams of the doors were covered with tape to keep the gas from seeping out. It was at this time the gas peroxic acid um, pellets um, were lowered into the chambers. It was at this time the children began to scream and cry aloud. So the Nazis started two motorcycles engines to drown out the dying wails and screams of the panicked innocents. On average, it took people 15 to 20 minutes to die. In, the, in these gas chambers, and in all that time, nowhere was God and his intervening hand. Nowhere. 
Note also the churches as institutions did nothing to help these innocents. Where was the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives of German churchgoers? Perhaps he was too busy, like nowadays, inducing holy laughter and nonsensical speech. Perhaps he was too busy giving people gold fillings while sparkling them with gold dust. Or more likely than all that, perhaps he um, does not exist. In 1944, approximately 500,000 men, women, and children had already died at Auschwitz um, alone. That's just at Auschwitz. That's not, um, that's not counting the other camps where people were gassed to death starved and worked to death, and I dare say the lucky few were shot. I wonder how Christians could even attempt to explain how their God could have sat on his hands while little boys and girls were shoved into the gas chambers, although I dare say many of them won't even try. I suspect they'll try to change the subject by asking me how I could call my, excuse me, call anything good or evil from an atheistic presupposition. And for the, for right now, my only response to that question is common sense. If God existed and we were all power, and he was all powerful, excuse me, then he should be held accountable for his depraved indifference. He had the power to act and prevent and stop these atrocities, and yet he did nothing. For all we know, if he actually existed, he sat back and enjoyed one snuff film after another. As innocent children were tortured to death, exfiscated to death, and so on, and yet did nothing. With great power comes great responsibility. And since we did not, and since he did not act, if he actually existed, he would be morally culpable for every atrocity throughout history, because he had infinite power and yet did not intervene. So now I ask, the, uh, I ask Christianity to explain how a God who is love could watch the atrocities of Auschwitz and do nothing or to intervene. Um, I suppose the uh, Calvinistic clan of Christianity will basically say, well, you know, God allows these things to happen um, so that he can later show his justice in, uh, in throwing these um, horrible perpetrators into hell for eternity. Um, however, he, if that even is the case, and it's not because he doesn't exist, how, uh, how does that justify um, his depraved indifference and watching these things happen and not intervening when he had the power. That still doesn't answer that um, question. Um, he still would be a horrible being to sit back and do nothing even though he had all the power in the world to do so. Um, so that doesn't explain away uh, his depraved indifference problem. Um, and even even then, if you were to say something that like that, Mr. Calvinist, uh, you still show God that in, uh, that he has an egotistical problem uh, where he um, is allowing all these innocent children. Of course, you would say they're not innocent because they're uh, imputed Adam's original sin, and they have a sin nature and all that. Um, putting that aside, they are still innocent. Uh, they don't deserve to go through the atrocities that they went through, and yet God did nothing. Um, so that right there is a bunch of divine BS. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes. And whatever you do, don't die.